so moving on to the next topic kind of a somber topic because a guy that I admired pretty much in my childhood and I don't know whether you share the same sentiments or not does yeah he's a pretty important guy yeah um, Jared Hulia passed away like um, a couple of days ago at the age of 73 years old and it was kind of a pr- quite big surprisingly it was really big news uh, the swarms of people you know commenting and talking about it and what a what a sad loss it was and specifically for me as a Liverpool fan you know quite a quite a sad uh, affair that happened you know um, a man who was pretty much one of the rising forces as a manager for Liverpool in the 2000s if yeah. I'm not mistaken um, won lots of trophies uh, was very beloved by many um, young players I even uh, tweeted online um, I tweeted uh, about the the passing of Jared Hulier and I basically I said um, it's a it's a sad loss he was one of the guys that the miracle of Istanbul might not have happened if there is no Jared Hulier yeah you know and he and he we went that team went on to stun the biggest team in the world at that at that moment which was AC Milan if you, if you remember yeah, yeah. correctly they went, on, uh, they, went to, they went on to beat uh, Juventus in the quarterfinals as well yeah and Chelsea at the semis so even on the road to the final it was a pretty tough uh, journey yeah and I think one of the things is even though uh, Rafa Benitez was the manager at the time in 2005 um, a lot of the players before that uh, maybe uh, not Xabi Alonso or Luis Garcia Luis Garcia no. or Cissé or, or Cissé was signed by Julien Right. Yeah. So, he's still a Hulier player. But Cisse didn't play under Hulier yeah. uh, in many ways. Yeah, he never played under Hulier, but yeah. he was linked with Hulier for like three years. Yeah. And they ended up buying him. So um, even yeah. even even that. So you can see that much of that team's makeup, that team's core, mm-hmm. was all brought on by Jared Hulier. Yeah. So yeah, let's take a look at the 2005 squad. Uh, Dudek, obviously a Hulier player. Uh, mm. Finnan, Hulier player. Uh, Carragher, Hulier player. Uh, Sam Hippier, Hulier player. And left back is uh, Risa, also Hulier player. Uh, Stevie. Yeah, Stevie G, obviously. obviously. Uh, Gerard made him captain at a tender age of 22, you know. So he played a big role in developing Steven, uh, Steven Gerard, no doubts. Uh, I think other than that, there is uh, Didma Haman. Oh yeah, the uh, Didi Haman thing Didi was Haman, a very yeah. big uh, Hulier influence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For that, right? And also, even Harry Kewell was a Hulier signing, and he played a big role yeah. in, in the Champions League. Um, Milan Baros as well. Milan Baros. And yeah. of course, the guy that's going in the final as well is uh, Veldemir Smitser. Smitser, yes. Yeah. The Igor Biscan Vladimir Smitser jokes. Yeah, yeah. Enhance. Yep. I mean, essentially, those players are also the same players that, um, barring Dudek and uh, Risa, Kewell and Baros, those are the teams that uh, won trophies under Hulier. So there was the League Cup before that, two years before. And then also in 2001, obviously, uh, they won the treble, treble. Yeah, which is uh, the FA Cup, the League Cup, as well as the UEFA Cup. And then in that same year, they won the Super Cup and the Charity Shield. So five trophies in one year. I mean, uh, before this, you might keep in mind that Liverpool were not a winning side at all. They were not competitive. Under Roy Evans. Yeah, under Roy oh. Evans. Uh, they only won the Willie Cup in the whole decade of the 90s. Okay, 92, they won the FA Cup, but that was under Graham Souness. Um, okay, like you can say they won the league in the 1990, but that was not the Premier League era. That was still a Division One. So, like, uh, all right, what do you think about this Hulier thing? I What's think it's... Um, it's quite it's sad, yeah, because you're talking, sad. About, you're talking about someone... Who, like you said, yeah. uh, Liverpool in the 90s were not an uh, all conquering force. Yeah. Certainly not in the time when I started supporting Liverpool and then in 1995, 96, mm-hmm. around that time. They had a lot of good players, no doubts, but yeah. they're just missing something, you know? Well, they were a talented bunch, the Spice yeah. Boys, all yeah. that they stuff. They were called Spice Boys for a reason, I guess. Yeah, and Roy, was, Roy is not a bad guy. Like Roy, yeah. Roy I Evans is like a friendly uncle I mean, type manager. O- honestly, like. That team is is a title contender team. I mean, in terms of quality itself, there's no doubts. You're saying it's not like they were bad players. I mean, those kind of players under a good manager can win you t- leagues, can win you titles even today. 
you know, your Robbie Fowlers and all that. Stan Collymore, you know. Steve Stan, McMahon. Uh, Steve McMahon. Steve, St- Steve McMahonman. Steve McMahonman, yeah, who went on to win uh, multiple Champions League and the La Liga. So, yeah, I mean, let's just talk about this. Uh, obviously, when the Spice Boys are, uh, was almost at the end, uh, Liverpool uh, decided to appoint uh, Gerard Houllier as a joint manager to Roy Evans. With Roy Evans, yeah. yeah. They didn't sack Roy Evans straight away. So, I, I think they lasted just one season there. And then uh, Roy Evans parted ways. So, Gerard Houllier got his uh, team where he controls it 100%. And then from there, I think... Um, Honestly, it's, it might be a bold statement, but I've been saying this even before his passing. I've been saying this like even four or five years ago. I mean, without Hulier, I mean, Liverpool might not be where he is now. Liverpool, uh, Hulier did build the foundation for Liverpool as a modern club. You know, he made Liverpool dream again. Yeah. To be honest. If I remember correctly, um, also that t- that was the era when Hulier came in when. Um the internet was just kicking off and yeah. uh, people were like they're moving more into the whole branding aspect yeah. of football and I also remember specifically one of the key things that influenced the Julia uh, arrival was his work uh, I think with the French national team Yeah, yeah. if yeah. I'm not mistaken yep. and also the fact that Wenger had just come in a few years earlier and yeah. changed the game uh, yes. for Arsenal yeah. and when Julia came in much like Wenger, um, a lot of systematic changes, yeah. uh, dietary changes, uh, yeah. training, you know, more emphasis on development. I mean, Hulier is a man manager to that aspect. You know? Yeah. He truly is a man manager. Like, he will get the best out of the players, you know. Right. Yeah, he, I mean, a lot of people had nice things to say about him. Everyone had nice things yeah, to say about him. a lot of people. It's quite surprising now that I look at it because... Um, Julia is one of those guys. Jared Julia was always one of these people who I knew was a very intelligent guy. And I knew as well, one thing that he was, was that he was fiercely loyal to his players. Yes. And, you know, I think you can credit the fact, you can see and credit a very similar thing. When Owen and Jared came on the scene, the amount of game time they were given, yeah. the amount of trust they were given, yeah. you know, I mean, like, I remember when uh, he came in, Arsene Wenger came in, people were like saying they might be playing full of foreign players in the club. I exactly, mean, yeah. I mean, obviously, there were a few here and there. It's you remember players, his uh, first but, uh, a press lot of conf- British players. Yeah. yeah, his first press conference. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, we were watching it the other day. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he said, like, oh, look, we're going to, we want to have a British heart yes. in this team. Yeah. So we want to keep the core British players, yeah. at least six I think, uh, homegrown. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, even before he started his football career as a manager, he was actually like a teacher or something like that. Right. And uh, he was actually a student in Liverpool itself. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Correct. So even before the Liverpool connection football terms, he was already there personally as a as a journey of adulthood. Yeah. And all that. Yeah. So I think uh, he, he really is Scouse. He's like a <laughs> French Scouse. Yeah. I think one of the great things was that um, you could see, right, one when he passed straight away, uh, Jamie's tweet and then straight away we saw yeah. we heard about um, Michael Owen's tweet yeah yeah, yeah. we heard then the one that just broke me was uh, St- Stevie's tweet because yeah, not even his tweet his conference his Instagram thing yeah, and yeah. his press conference right his yeah. press conference I think J- J- Gerard me cried before and after that but during itself he almost cried during the conference yeah. itself you can really hear his uh, voice Looking up. It's heartbreaking yeah. when someone like that important mm. like passes away. Yeah. I mean, even early videos of uh, Hulia talking about Gerard, he was saying that Gerard is coming in from the right back, but I see him potential coming at the center. Like he truly believed. Uh, yeah. I mean, Steven Gerard is just a right back, you know, when he first started <laughs> his career. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not like a Trent type of right back. I mean, like a then like a full back, you know. Like a defending Honestly, kind of guy. Honestly, I could see Stevie be Steven Gerrard being a Trent type white red back. Yeah. If you, I mean, I mean uh, didn't stop Rafa from trying him in the uh, wing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yes. And later on, true, yeah. I mean, but I mean, like, could you like at twenty two, mm. he uh, Gerard Julier trust Gerrard to become captain and 
not stripped Hippia, but he he replaced he, Hippia. Yeah, he replaced Hippia. At that time, and, Hippia was a very popular captain. Yeah, and, and Hippia like took it like a man. He he did not have any grudges with Hulia at and all. And don't forget that Hippia yeah. was one of Hulia's first signings to the club. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was uh, yeah. and he was pretty much that that defender yeah, yeah. that pretty much um, transformed Liverpool in the 2000s, yeah. you know. Um, and it was like the goal standard him and yeah. Hansho. I remember yes. both those guys yeah. being uh, really important players. Yeah. And Julio always, uh, I think Jared Julio um, had this transfer uh, thing where he would look for players in the outside I mean, regions. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I think about this, like people said that. Uh, Jared Hulie overhauled the team. I mean, like straight after, understandably so. When you have the Spice Boy, you know, the you, Spice Boy era, you wanna no. not to say f- the, f- the the nicest yeah. way to say you wanna phase out all the bad eggs, I guess. Yeah. So it looks like he bought success, you know, buying whole team. But you have to keep in mind, he got a lot of bargains. He did not went out and buy like record signings here and there. Okay, barring Emil Husky, uh, eleven million at that Emil time. Emil Husky. But other than that, yes, I mean, Emma like Husky was a prime player back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, Emma Husky was a legit player back then. Mm. I mean, Julie made him like <laughs> one of the best strikers in the country, you know. So like, yeah, like, yeah, I remember I mean, that. But other than that, other than Husky, he actually bought a lot of uh, bargain buys, like Reeser and all Reeser. that. Reeser. Hancho was pretty cheap. I mean, like Hancho was thing. I, I was, I think it was from Blackburn. I think a, a recently relegated Blackburn and Kipia came from. Uh, is it? Is it William or is it Twenty? No. Is either one of those <laughs> Dutch clubs? It, was it? A, it was a Dutch club. No? It was a Dutch club. So not Sparta. Uh, yeah, something. Know, yeah, yeah. It was a Dutch club, but uh, wasn't Groningen, was it? No, no, no. It's either William or Twenty. I'm, I'm okay. Wrong. Yeah. If All I'm wrong, right. then sorry about that. But uh, on top of my head, I think both of them, even Hansho and Herpia, was bought both under ten million. Yeah. So okay, Sander Westerveld as well was a legit goalkeeper for for a time being. Mm. Um, he was bought actually apparently it was quite expensive for a keeper four million I think, but it's still you know it's still not crazy money, and then after her uh, Sander Westerveld had like um, had a falling out I remember in a Bolton game or something, yeah. and then he went on to buy another bargain in Jersey Dudek, <laughs> I, apparently yeah Jersey Dudek just won the league with um, Fairnoid but. Still, it's not really a player that a lot of top clubs would buy, you know. Even though he's a quality player, lah, Jesse yeah. Judek, who would went on to become a hero in the Champions League. Jesse Judek is pretty much that epitome keeper where you would go and look at like, and say and say, you know, I don't, I can't win the league with you, but I think I can win like a cup game. Yeah, but and they almost won you. the league in the 2000-2002 season right. where Arsenal won. They came. That in was second. the last yeah. minute. Uh, yeah, the last day thing, right? Yeah, I think so, maybe. But uh, that was the highest ch- league ch- finish that Liverpool had in since the nineties. You know, they were so close, especially uh, coming in after the trouble season. Right. And keep in mind that uh, Hulie was out for like half a season due right. to heart issues. And uh, I was watching a documentary and saying that Rick Perry and Hulie saying that. They both said that he actually like came back quite early, like he w- within three months he's already back managing and I don't know maybe it paid, they paid the price for that you know so he was not the same man when he came back. Right. But you know a very special moment is when he came back it was a Champions League match against AS Roma. Yeah. And Fabio Capello went on to hug him and right. you know the Liverpool fans singing you never walk alone to him it was right. very heart touching yeah. 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 I mean. Which brings me to my next thing about Julia, yep. you know, um, his legacy. Yeah. In terms of his legacy for football, the thing about Gerard Julia was he'd always been the kind of person who not just was a m- club manager, but he was... He was a sporting director as well. Sporting, you know, yeah. he, he, act- he was like your modern day sporting directors and stuff. His legacy... Yeah. It's something that is so vital. So it's so impressive to see, to think that he had not only influence on Liverpool Football Club as a whole. Like he was on the freaking magazine cover yeah, yeah, yeah. for the match uh, program against uh, Liverpool versus Tottenham. You know, yeah. he was on the he was on that cover, and he was on that match cover. And just to see how impressive he was, 
as a manager, and then you talk, think about it, it's like sporting director skills, what he did with uh, Leipzig and the Red Bull yeah. companies. All, all the Red Bull. All the Red you, Bull you, companies. You talk about people like director of football. I think uh, Gerard Julio bring it to the next level. Yeah. He's the global sports director. Yeah. So he's a director for football for all Red Bull teams. So, I mean, that that's next level. That's crazy. Yeah. Sadio Mane um, pretty much... Uh, Put up a post uh, crediting Julia for his career advancement. Oh, yeah, uh, money as well. Yeah, Sadio Mane did as well, okay. and I guess it's yeah. coming from Salzburg okay, when okay. he played there. All right, and when he moved. Um, I mean, it makes sense because like he was a guy from Bambali, you know. Like, yeah, I mean, like Senegal. Then, yeah, and then like Julia you know, always did have this yeah. that relationship with, with Senegal. Yeah. Not only that, yeah. not not just about him from Senegal. Julia is the type of guy that will will truly believe a nobody, you know. And like make that nobody believes that he can make it in life. Oh, I mean, okay. Yeah. I thought you say he fully believed in nobody else. No, like no. I mean, like he believed in a nobody. He believed in someone who yeah. did not believe in themselves. Yeah. I mean, he is the type of guy that made this guy become who he is. You know. Like, I can see that. Okay. Since you see it like that, yeah. I do see. Yeah. Like the Red Bull connection is so interesting to me because yeah. you've seen what Red Bulls become and yep. the type of. Pl- team players. I mean, he died while being a sporting director. He was still employed by the club. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, and also that, he, he literally almost gave his life for Liverpool when he had a heart attack. Right. He that came, was the yeah. Roma one, right? Yeah. Uh, not only that, he came back in the Roma game within three months. Uh, even before that, it was a game against Leeds United. He was feeling a bit... Leeds United, uh, yeah. yeah. I remember so, that. Uh, Phil yeah. Thompson was still in charge of that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Phil Thompson did a very good job, actually. As a, yeah. As Phil anchor. Thompson loved... Yeah, Gerard yeah, yeah really. I think that was one apparently, of the best moves that Jared Julia uh, did. Yeah, there's only that. I think like um, apparently Phil Thompson was not that doesn't have a rapport with Roy Evans and all that with the Spice right. Boys era. Right. And then like Hulia brought him in, you know. Right. Like, I think uh, he pro- has a lot of uh, probably in depth to, to Hulia in that sense. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I can see that. You know, that, I, I think uh, the <laughs> best things you know uh, Hulia has done has to be like. Signing Gary McAllister, you know, right. He was thirty six years old already. Yeah. You know, like what manager would trust a guy like this? I would, I would think yeah. that that's something that Julio didn't just come to on his own. Yeah. Because I think it's something that he looked at the stop and he said, yeah. "We want this guy." And only and that, uh, I, I read somewhere in an article like he said the, one of the reasons why he bought uh, uh, Gary McAllister is because obviously he's quite quality. Like uh, before yeah. this, only that uh, he would be a good leader, and only that. He thought about Stevie Gerrard when he signed uh, Gary McAllister. Gary McAllister, just yeah. to teach. Yeah, he seriously influential did yeah. person in the dressing room. Yeah, and stuff. Gary McAllister went on to be his assistant at Aston Villa, and Gary McAllister obviously was an assistant at Liverpool for a while, mm. and he was an assistant to Steven Gerrard right now at Rangers. Rangers. So that 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 I don't know that that click. Mm. What is it called? Click. Yeah. yeah, like that click is there, you know? The gang. <laughs> it feels like it's more than just a teammate. It's like family, you know? Yeah. Like you can you can see the same yeah. kind of stuff when, uh, when you look at a modern-day Jurgen Klopp, for example. Yeah. Jurgen uh, Klopp gave a uh, set that L- Gerard Hulley <laughs> is Liverpool. Yeah. Uh, and, okay, uh, okay. When at the start of the year, I was I, I won't lie, I was a bit upset that... Uh, not to say upset, but I felt a bit uh, upset that... Um, that Liverpool will be moving out of Melwood, you know? Because that was Julia's legacy, you know? Him rebuilding Melwood as a modern thing. Right. And I'm, I'm very glad that uh, Julia uh, ended up uh, living long enough to see them win the league. And also to see them win the league in the last season where they trained at Melwood. I think I'm glad that I've seen that he's seen long enough to see guys like um, Stevie become a manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and sure. you know, like um, yeah, yeah. he truly believed in TV when yeah, Stevie said and he was seeing mm-hmm. Kara being what Kara is, yeah. and you know, as a as a TV analyst, yeah, yeah. and then he's got so many great relationships, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. around the league. Yeah, I think. I mean, it's yeah, I mean, like even Jorge Mourinho was saying that uh, even though he technically did not uh, had a match against Juli. But he did a lot of business with Hulie yep. when Hulie was working as an executive at UEFA yep. in a sporting I role. I can see that, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, yeah, even, even with Klopp, he met Klopp, like, when he was at Mainz or Dortmund, you know? Yeah. Yeah, or something like that. And he was the first guy that called the, to congratulate Jürgen Klopp when Klopp uh, was signed at Liverpool. Right. Klopp said that in an interview. Like, I can see as that. A, I can totally as a tribute see that. Yeah. interview, you know? And so not only that, you know, when they won the Champions League, uh, 
this uh, fun fact lah. He actually went down to the tunnel to the team uh, when they won the Champions yeah. League at Istanbul. I'm not. I I heard about that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not surprised at all because yeah. those were his boys. Yeah. Like those and were his. That was his team. He said that one of his. I think it might be Hippia or maybe Kara. I think maybe Carragher. He said that, that, that we we want it, boss. Said yeah, he yeah. said Carragher is the one who said yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, that, like, uh, I mean, Hughley and Danny Murphy are the reason why I started watching football. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Danny Murphy's yeah. tribute to him was... Yeah, Danny Murphy cried. Actually quite beautiful, yeah. yeah. Danny Murphy, like, he believed in Danny Murphy and Danny Murphy was 17 years old from Crew Alexandra. Holy shit. Yeah. It's like, it's, you know, a lot of British young players, you know. It was in an era where Chelsea, I think at that point Chelsea played... Everybody was not British at one point. There was that... Uh, Desai era, you know. Yeah, the there Claudio the Ranieri. Even Rose before, Marine, even before, yeah. like uh, uh, Roberto Di Matteo. Uh, oh, you mean Zola? Yeah, Zola. Uh, what is that guy's name? Uh, Giallini Viani, oh. when manager. I mean, they were more like an Italian club back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. Even Frank Rijkaard was a uh, manager there. They at one point did not Rude play. Gullet. Yeah, Ruud Gullit. Ruud Gullit Frank Reichard I'm sorry yeah Ruud Gullit yeah, yeah. Ruud Gullit and at one point they did not play any British players you know but then uh, Ger- Gerald Julio went on to like sign all these young lads and just yeah. yeah I mean he did not go the easy route and buy success you know he that, did not have any budget I mean in mind. I, I just, I just, it's funny and I, and I don't mean it as anything to disrespect or anything but I mean, Jared Julia didn't really make all the best transfer decisions in the world. Yes, that's true. Bruno Cheru um, being one of them. That is true. He you did know. say Bruno Cheru is uh, going to be the next Zidane. Zidane. <laughs> but then again, that's pretty normal. Flops and all that. Like, they and who not, else? Who else did they, they did not really make a loss. Salah and... Uh, 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 they did not... Other than Dioff, I think is their biggest loss they made. But I don't know, I don't know man. It's not like a Carroll kind of loss. You know? I mean, in terms of back then, it was. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, who knows? He still won a trophy with. Um, with the funny Diof. thing about Diof is that I thought, I actually, when I looked at Diof play, I thought that he had all the talent to be a great player. Mm. I think Diof is just a Balotelli uh, situation. Yeah. Yeah, Sounds so like it. Looks yeah, like it. Yeah. I mean, I one of my. I don't think even Klopp would make a Diof. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I don't think so. So one of my favorite memories of um, Jared Julia, I think uh, your memory was the AS Roma comeback, right? Yes. That we had. And one of the memories that you could see of Jared Julia often when he, when he would go on the training pitch and there was, this, uh, there was this thing where he would like come out, do, uh, do the training sessions and everything. And he would be more like um, coaching them than taking them down the tunnel go for the press conference, and then they're like, well, you know, we, we want to win. So I'm sure the players want to win as well because they pulls the club that, you know, it's about winning. Yeah. I remember there was like at one point uh, towards his, the end of his career at Liverpool, uh, he said that time, obviously, he came back after the heart attack and he was yeah. never the same man again. Yeah. And then the media, Liverpool fans were attacking him a lot. Yeah. And, you know, he went on and, and stepped his foot down. He's like, you know what? If Liverpool don't want me, it's okay. I will take it like a man and something, something within that line. And it really shows that he truly loves the club. Like he is very content if he gets fired. You know, he he will he will have no ill will with the club or nothing like that. Like he truly is Mr. Liverpool. I would say that one of the things the like one of the other ones with Jared Julia is that we never really saw a lot of touchline stuff. Yeah. Because of his heart condition. Yeah. And his just overall health, but yeah. when he did, when he was there, when he was present, you could you could feel it. The Champions League one is a yeah. is a is a very special one. I remember the season where we won the Waddington Cup. Yeah. And the 2003 one. Yeah, the the one where Owen scored yeah, first. Yeah, Owen and Gerard. And then Stevie finished it off, yeah. and I was like, man, it's so great to see um, Gerard really get to lift a trophy. Yeah. You know. That was a great season for me. Yep, I, yep. I, 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 we didn't do much. Yeah. We, was that the season we qualified for the Champions League? Yeah. Yeah, that is. That was season we qualified that for the Champions League. That season we qualified for the Champions League, like in the, within the last two games. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, that was yeah. a, that was a, ter- that was a great time, man. Yeah. Like, that, like uh, okay, let's talk about his achievement before and after Liverpool. After Liverpool, he went to Lyon. He won two league titles. Right. And then he went on to become like a sporting director or uh, executive level. Before that, he won PSG their first league title. 
Yeah, I remember you told me this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, PSG was only like 15 years old. At that time, that time yeah. yeah. So he, he, is, he paid his dues, you know. And then he was the assistant manager for France under Michel Platini. And then he went on to become the manager of France. Uh, uh, but due to bad luck, he, they failed to finish the... I think a lot of the uh, older, the, that French 1998 class. Yeah. He was actually a director, a technical director for 1998. Thierry Henry gave yeah. him credit. Yeah, yeah. You know? You know, he actually won a medal. He deserved the medal. He, he, yeah. he was one of the reasons why France won the league. He was a technical director Yeah. at that time. That's I'm just... You could see it. I, I could see when Thierry Henry was talking about... Uh, uh, when Thierry Henry commented and, and said how distraught he was that, that Julio died. That Julio, like, is a certified grower of players. Yes. He farmed... He's done so much things to bring out players. He had a genuine, caring, uh, yeah, yeah. you know... Apparently, like, Steven Gerrard, uh, Danny Murphy, and Michael Owen had the same things to say, meaning, like, they, they were always invited to dinner together. And yeah. Gerrard really genuinely knows everyone's family member by yeah. name, like, by yeah. heart. So, like, it really shows what kind of person he is. And also, obviously, he got uh, Aston Villa out of a relegation battle. I don't life. think many people remember that one. Yeah, yeah. Actually, he did quite good. I mean, obviously, a lot of people... It fell off him. in the end for him. Yeah. But it it, it fell off in the end for him, and it fell off in the end for Liverpool, because yeah. when I remember when he had qualified for the Champions League, Yeah. he was sacked the next day. Yes, yes. And I mean, but he, he was content with that. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I'm guessing he was content with that. Yeah. I was a bit... Me, I, I, was pretty, by uh, I was pretty upset, not to be honest. I, my only thing was, if we made the Champions League, why are we sacking the coach now? Yeah. But then when they said they were bringing in Rafa, I was like, oh, okay. That's why okay. they sacked him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they sacked him to bring in the, the guy who won in Spain. Yeah. Yeah, apparently at that time we were linked with Jose Mourinho quite a lot. And then Hector Coupez, or Coupe, whatever you call him. Uh, and then Rafa. So... I remember that. Isn't Hector Coupe, the failed uh, France national team manager. No, no, no. He was the manager for uh, Valencia at one point before Rafa. Wow. Yeah. Okay. They went to the Champions League final where they lost. Mm. He was that manager, I think. Yeah. Uh, I mm. think I hope I hope that you know, I hope that people kind of remember Gerard Hulier. I yep. feel like it. Sometimes it's really easy for us to get swept up by. Of course, one day we're all going to remember Jurgen Klopp for sure. And yeah. Jurgen's going to be a special manager in Liverpool history, in football history. Uh, Jurgen's going to be one of the best managers to go down. Like, the f- one of the best managers to ever have existed in football, uh, eventually. But with Gerard Hulier, I think, the m- I just think that it, it, there's a special place for him yeah. in football. Yeah. And if you're not going to see it through the Liverpool angle of things... See it through the fact that all these players in l- the Red Bull teams yeah. are now highly sought after properties in football. Yeah. You know? See the influence he had on French football. I mean, he's like, I don't know, the way he scouts players is like, he's almost like Moneyball in a way, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm pretty sure he's one of those guys that was Stats, the one to implement yeah, yeah. certain levels of Moneyball into yeah, yeah, the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like a pre Moneyball and all that. Um, not more for the profit of things, but really more the development of the development of players. Right now, yeah. Malaysia are having this problem as well, but that's yeah. a topic that's for another a, day. A, another topic. Freaking, uh, so yeah, I mean, yeah, he's a unique character. Yeah, unique yeah. and Very you know, unique. rest in peace. And uh, he's a man of football, not just like a. Yeah, it's hard to say. You know, he's very unique. Yeah, man. Rest in peace, man. Yeah, yeah. and. Uh, you know, a lot of great things to say. Your li- legacy lives on. Your legacy lives on. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, please leave us your favorite memories of Jared Julia in the comment section below. Um, please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And, yeah, we'll see you on the flip side. Right. See you guys.